I'm not a man. I don't have a tie and a coat. But I'm going to take these shoes off. Woo, there we go. Woo, hallelujah. Now I feel short. But praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. My goodness. Woo, well, what a wonderful service we had this morning. I'm going to catch my breath and I'm going to take my time. Ooh, I might lose my breath again in a minute. Amen. Who knows? We don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen tonight, but I ain't really worried about it. Amen. I am not really worried about it. I used to get nervous, but I ain't even nervous. I ain't even nervous. Hallelujah. Because y'all are my people and you love me no matter what. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I'm just, I feel so good right now. I feel, I feel so much peace and I feel so much joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I really want to just take my time tonight because I just, woo, glory. <laughs> I know sometimes I get excited and I, and, I, and I don't say stuff I wish I had said, you know, because I get so caught up in my, in my excitement. And so I really just want to just, woo, I just, I want to give it to you. I want to give whatever God's got. Amen. We were, um, let me just start off by saying this. <clears throat> um, when Tyson comes back, with pastor I'm believing he's going to be a different person and um, I had a chance to be with him you all know that I went with them uh, when they left and um, I think I was the buffer you know pastor intimidates people a little bit and so um, I think Tyson was glad I was there for the first few days and um, but uh, we were at the first church, the church I got to attend with them for the first three nights of the revival. Uh, we were at Pastor Bridget, uh, Bridget's church. I forget her last name. But we were there Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So for three nights, we was at the same church. And we were going to church the last night there. And Tyson said, Pastor, is this the last night you're preaching at this church? And Pastor said, yes. He said, well, you better bring it. You better bring the fire. Give it all you got. And he said, all right, we're going to give it all we got. So that's what I feel like tonight. I'm just going to give it all I got. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But uh, so lots of things that happened in that revival. I just want to talk a few minutes to, about what I experienced, a few things that I experienced while I was there um, before I get into this. Would that be all right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. That'd be all right. I'm very thirsty tonight. I might have to have, I'm on, I don't know. We may need another. Woo, you need a refill. <laughs> But I'm so thankful that I got to go because, um, you know, it didn't look like I was going to get to go. Um, I think, I don't know if I told you all this. I told some people, but um, I had requested, um, you know, I, I, let me just start over. <laughs> Rewind. All right, here we go. In the past years when Pastor would go off and travel and do revivals, I got to go with him. Um, you know, the first three years we lived in Florida, I didn't work a job. So when he went, I, I got to go wherever that was. You know, we went to Kentucky a lot and did moves there and different places. And so wherever he went, I got to go with him. And so I've always been able to go with him. And so, um, you know, in the, and then the last eight years I've been working and things have been different. It's not as easy for me to get to go. And he hasn't went out a whole lot in this season since we've been here you know we've been building this and you know god's been been working here but he goes out so you know he's went out here some since we've been here but um i really wanted to go i was like man i really want to go because i didn't get to go last time he went y'all know i had surgery back in october and i didn't get to go and i wanted to go then and i couldn't go so every time he gets an invite i'm like man i really want to go you know i really want to want to go i really feel like i need to go because i've always been able to be there with him i feel like my job as his wife is to be there with him you know yeah. Yeah. so i wanted to go and I wanted to go this time, and, I, and uh, he got the invite to go, and I was like, man, I want to go, really want to go. So I started looking at the calendar, trying to figure, me, trying to figure out how. How can this happen? How can I make this work? This ain't nothing what I was going to say tonight. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm saying it for a reason. So, um, so I'm trying to figure out how was I going to make this work. And um, so long story short, I, I, uh, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna ask this lady that covered for me for my surgery. She, she came in and covered my position for me at work. I'm just gonna ask her. 
just ask, just ask, hey, are you available by any chance between this date and this date? Like, could you work for me any of these days, if not all of these days, it, just any of these days? And so she came back to me and she said, yeah, I could work this day, this day, this day. I just can't work this day and this day. And I was like, oh, okay, awesome. So, um, <clears throat> so then I was like, okay. So I had planned to take that to my upper, you know, and say, hey, you know, can I have these days off? Well, before I had a chance to do that, she came back to me and she said, oh, I forgot on my calendar, I have this appointment and I can't change it and it's on Tuesday. And I was like, oh, well, it's okay. I guess it's just not meant for me to go. It's all right, I'm just not supposed to go, you know? So I was like, all right, it's okay. I just thought I'd ask anyway. So I had set my mind I wasn't going. And that night, she said, she texted me, she said, if I change my appointment, could you still go? I said, absolutely. <laughs> if you can work for me, I can go. <laughs> So she said, well, you get it approved and I'll work for you and you can go. And I said, all right. So I sent a message to my upper, you know, and I don't know why I was like, you know, I was like, well, I'm just going to ask. Worst thing they can do is tell me, no, you can't, you know, you got to be here. So I just laid it out there, you know, and I said, listen, I said, my husband is going out of town on a ministry trip, and I really feel led to go. I said, I don't know if you know our personal life, but outside of our secular jobs, ministry is our life. It's what we do. And he's going on this trip, and I really feel like I need to be there, and I need to go with him. So I'm asking for this date through this date to be off. And I said, this person, if she's available, could cover for me. So, you know, is it possible that I could have this time off? If not, I understand sacrifice has got to be made. I left it at that. By the next day, he texted me, he said, she said she'd work for you. It's fine. You can go. Amen. So, now there's more to the story. I don't know if I should say it on live, but I'll say it anyway. Uh, not only did I get permission to go, but that same person, I'll just say person, that same person uh, came and delivered me, I'll just say it like this, came and delivered me an envelope, oh, yeah. <laughs> delivered me an envelope and said, in my quiet time, I've been feeling a pull, didn't say it was the Holy Spirit, but I've been feeling a pull that I wanted to help you out way back in October when you was off and you was out of work and you weren't getting paid, but I didn't. But I've been feeling a pool, and now I know why. So in that envelope, do I need to tell you what was in that envelope? <laughs> Something called a C-H-E-C-K? An unexpected C-H-E-C-K, might I add. A blessing yeah. that, that also was in addition to the trip that I was going. So, so in the end of the note, it was have a safe trip. Enjoy your trip. Have a safe trip, right? So all of this, right, for me to get to go. So I went because I just knew. I knew I was going for an assignment. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. But anyways, I got to go on this trip. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I got to go on this trip. And in that first, when I was there, I can't speak for what happened when I was left. I mean, I've watched the services as much as I could. But while I was there, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost Woo, the Holy Ghost was strong. It was strong. It was so strong. We, we prayed for some people. We prayed for, um, I know that I was involved. I, I say this because you know how we get in the altars and we start praying for people and you get to praying for one over here and then pastor will move on to pray for somebody over here. So while I was praying over here for somebody, I don't know what was happening over there. But we started praying for people and I know I was involved with praying for at least three people that got baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. So... And, and the thing about it was, is it was not, it was not long. It was not a drawn out process, Sister Jeanette. It was like instant. It was like immediate. It was like, you want to be filled? Yes. In the name of Jesus, God fill her. I mean, it was instant. It was like that. It was so quick. It was like God would just had a bucket and he would just dump it on people. It was amazing what God has doing. But listen, folks, listen, let me tell you something. All that that's going on up there ain't no different than what's going on right here in this house. 
What do you think we experienced this morning? It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. So we don't have to travel a thousand miles away to Ohio and wish that we had a chance to go with Pastor Sean on this revival trip to get what's happening. It is in this house. It is in you. It is in me. It is in each and every one of us. And we can have it as long as we tap into it and we release it. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. All right, that was all for free. That was just a warm-up. That wasn't nothing I was going to say. Hallelujah. Nothing at all. I guess that's my testimony. All right. So listen, as I was meditating about what I wanted to talk about, what what I was going to say tonight, what I was going to minister tonight, and I was talking with the Lord, and I was talking to the Lord. I was talking to him when I was in the shower. Anybody else pray while you're in the shower? Talk to the Lord while you're in the shower. Uh, now I now I kind of have an understanding why my husband's uh, long sermon showers, like why he's in the shower so long, because he's having sermons in the shower. I know. I was like, yeah, he's in there forever. Now I understand. So as I was talking to the Lord and uh, about what I wanted to do, and just meditating on today, this this just came up out of me. You know, I'm praying in the shower and I'm talking to the Lord and I'm just meditating on some stuff. And this is what came up out of my spirit. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, Taj, give me the title. Don't take the bait. Oh, all right. <laughs> I, don't take the bait. I was praying to the Lord. I was talking about something. And all out of my mouth, don't take the bait. All right. I'm like, whoo, okay. <laughs> all right, so for those of you who like to fish, I got anybody that like to fish? Shane, I know you like to fish. Brother, Brother Brian, you like fish? You don't like fish. You like fish? Austin, Aunt, you all like to fish? You men, mostly men. You got some women like to fish? All right, for those of you who like to fish, I know Taj, he works with fish, smelly fish all day. Those of you who like to fish, you might really relate to this message tonight. And it's very interesting to me. Austin, it's very interesting to me that God spoke this title to me. Me and you were talking about it. He said, that sounds like something I would say. A very interesting God spoke this title to me because I do not like fishing. <laughs> don't like it. I mean, I know nothing about fishing except just the very few basics that my daddy taught me when I was young. I've never been interested in fishing. Don't like to go fishing. All I like to do is cast and reel. Cast and reel. That's it. I don't touch the worm. I don't bake the hook. And I sure don't touch that fish. <laughs> So, why in the world, Lord, are you using me to talk about fishing? Don't take the bait. Fishing terms. Well, he, well, he ain't using me to talk about fishing, but he's using me to talk about fishing terms. Hallelujah. But anyway, so in fishing terms, okay, fishing terms, bait is any item that's placed on a hook with the intent of tricking the fish into eating it, right? That's what a bait is. So, I want you to notice it says any item. Now, when I was a kid, my daddy, when he would take us fishing, we always used worms, which I wouldn't touch. Uh, But some people use other things for bait. I've been fishing, uh, well, I haven't been fishing with Logan, but I know my kids have been fishing with Logan. He uses shrimp sometimes. Um, You know, there's lots of different things you can use. Um, Sometimes people cut up fish guts, don't they, Taj? Depends on what you're fishing for. You use different kinds of bait, right? But I know this, uh, last spring we went to Kentucky to my daddy's place and we, he had a pond, there's a pond and we went fishing, we took the kids fishing and we used raw hot dogs. <laughs> now I would touch that, you know, I would touch that kind of bait. But anyways, it says any item used, right? Trying to, uh, trying to lure that fish, trying to trick that fish, right? Into, into catching that fish. Y'all understand what we're saying. Bait. We know what we're talking about when we say bait. Okay. Amen. All right. So let's go to our scripture. Hallelujah. We're going to start in, I got a lot of reading. Genesis chapter 39. (coughs) Genesis chapter 39. I'm going to read starting with verse one. And this is a story about Joseph. Now I have, I don't know. I pulled this thing out of the dust. Literally wiped it all dust off of it. Pastor Sean's one of his Bibles. 
It's a King James and Amplified side by side. So I'm going to try to remember to read King James, but I might jump over to the Amplified right next to it because it's good too. So this is Genesis 39. A story about Joseph. Now this starts out with, uh, this is not the beginning of Joseph's life, but this is the part where we meet up with Joseph and Potiphar, right? So you all are familiar with Joseph. And we know what Joseph went through a lot of stuff before he got to this point. Yeah. All right. But we're starting right here. Verse 39. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hand of the Ishmaelites, which had bought, brought him, I'm sorry, brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Somebody say, prosperous man. Prosperous man. Mm. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper. There's that word again. In his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord. Right. Oh, where have we heard that? The blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had saved the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Well favored. Woo, hallelujah. So I'm going to stop for just a second. So Joseph, we can read from this and understand that Joseph was a prosperous man, wasn't he? He was walking in the blessing of the Lord. It was working in his life. It was getting him all kinds of promotion in Potiphar's house, right? He came in as a slave, bottom, you know, nothing. But hallelujah, he started prospering. The Lord, the blessing of the Lord was working and he started prospering him and he brought him up and made him in charge and put him over everything in his house. Ooh, hallelujah. That's favor. Somebody say that's favor. <laughs> That's, fav that's, that's like the equivalent of finding somebody on the street that you don't know and just taking them in and saying, here, take care of my money, take care of my house, take care of everything I got. Now, how, how crazy would that be for us, right? But Joseph had favor. He was a goodly person and well-favored. So he was prosperous. The blessing of the Lord was working. And Potiphar placed him in charge over everything he had, all right? So things are going good for Joseph, right? Okay, now, let's keep going. Verse 7, it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, lie with me. Mm-mm. Uh-oh. So things are going good for Joseph. He's prospering in Potiphar's house, right? Ooh, hallelujah. And along comes the devil working through Potiphar's wife, trying to get him to come and lie with her, right? Okay, whoo, hallelujah, my God. Here comes the distraction, right? Joseph's doing good. Things are going well, right? And along comes this distraction. Now, I'm gonna jump away from this for a second. I'm just gonna tell you about my life, okay? So since the beginning of this year, our pastor, he's been preaching about the blessing of the Lord. And oh my goodness, that's some good stuff, isn't it? Now, I have been hearing him preach on the blessing of the Lord for as long as I can remember. It's not the first time I've heard it, but it sure feels like the first time I've heard it. And something has clicked in me this time I've heard it. You ever had that happen to you? You hear something and you're like, oh my goodness. It's like it sinks from here down to here. You just, you just get it, right? So he's been preaching on this. And I'm telling you, something has clicked in me, and I have got a determination in me, in me like never before that I am going to make sure that I am living under the blessing and not the curse. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
I'm, I'm tired of living under the curse. I am tired of doing things. Ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself. A lot of times our own choices is what causes the curse to be released in our lives. A lot of times our own disobedience is what causes the curse to be released in our life. You could be walking along thinking that you're being obedient in every area, but there's just this one thing that you're not being obedient in. And I'm going to tell you right now, yes, I'm walking in this office as a pastor, but there was this one thing that I wasn't being obedient in. Because I'm human. Hallelujah. Just like you. But, I, but I'm telling you, I, I made a determination this year. I said, enough is enough. And I'm tired of this mess. Yeah. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the cycles. I'm tired of the constant struggle. I'm tired of, I'm tired of it. Enough is enough. So you know what? I need to get myself back under the blessing and out of this curse. And the only way to do it is through obedience to what God has said. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, glory, hallelujah. So this year, things in my life have started to turn around. Uh -huh. Since I've made this declaration and I've gotten back under the blessing of the Lord, and away from the curse and back in my position under the blessing, uh -huh. that flow has started coming and the drought of fish, if you will, has started to come. And I finally, oh, I got a hold of this message too. I finally got back on the right side the boat <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. I was on the right boat but I was on the wrong side my God so I'm finally back on the right side where Jesus has been telling me to be all along why you been fishing over there you need to be over here the droughts over here oh but Jesus is so good over here I don't think I can go over there but I told you to be over here Glory, hallelujah. So, glory. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Woo, my, my, my. So, I finally got on the right side of the boat where Jesus was telling me to be all along. And now I'm starting to see this flow happen in my life. And people have started been given. I done told you about the C-H-E-C-K, the unexpected one. It was a big one, too. So people started giving to me, and people started giving to my family, and people started giving to my children. People started blessing them with things that were unexpected, started flowing down to them. Hallelujah. In a lot of ways, hallelujah. Why? Why is this happening? Because the blessing is working, right? It's all around me in every area of my life, in my job, in, in my money, favor, just like Joseph, right? All of these things are starting to flow. And here I am, here I am, just like a little fish swimming along in the blessing of the Lord. Life is good. I'm in the blessing, swimming. Things good. Oh, praise God. Finances are flowing. Children are healthy. Woo, job is good. Health is good. Everything is good, right? Just swimming along in the blessing. Things are good. But here comes the distraction. Here comes a distraction. Woo, glory, hallelujah. You see, I was up there in that revival, and I just told you some of what happened, but amazing things happened. And I was able to release my anointing in a way that I've never released it before. I was able to speak, and I was able to share things, and strong, powerful things came out of me. And I told you people got baptized, speaking in tongues in the Holy Ghost. But here's the most shocking part to me, is that God used me to speak a word of in tongues and interpretation to the Holy and not only that but God didn't use my husband to speak a word to the pastor God used me to speak a word to the pastor Ooh, hallelujah glory hallelujah I told you I had an assignment I told you I had to go my God hallelujah so God used me and I was able to minister and I was able to give this pastor a word hallelujah a word of revelation that she needed who that helped her see something she hadn't seen before hallelujah and then 
oh, here's my, oh, here's a good part. Not only did all of this happen, but the very last night of the revival, I got so drunk. <laughs> oh, I got so drunk. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm going to slow down and tell you about this if I can. <laughs> Y'all have seen me get drunk. But I got so drunk, my goodness. Now, this church is a shouting church, let me tell you. They're, they're old school Pentecostal. They speak in tongues and they shout and they jerk and they, 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 they got it. I'm telling you, they got it. But I don't know if they've ever seen anybody laugh in the spirit like I laughed in the spirit. Ooh, I was so drunk. But I was up on the pulpit, hallelujah, and, and, I, and I saw, I don't know, I don't know what I was doing, but I was up here on the pulpit, on their pulpit, and I, and I, I saw something down there, and I was going to get it, and I, and I went like this, and I went to step down off of their pulpit, and I totally missed that step. <laughs> missed it. Didn't even step down. I fell down off of that altar. Like, I just fell completely off of their pulpit. And when I, I'm telling you, when I went down, I, can I just be real? I started out in my flesh because my mind was distracted on something down there and I was going to get it and I, and I went to go down and it was like in my flesh, but real quick, <laughs> real quick, I got in the spirit when I hit the floor. Because <laughs> when I hit the floor, I twist my ankle, but I didn't feel a thing. And I, <laughs> and I started laughing as soon as I hit that floor. And I'm telling you, it was like angels, just, just angels just picked, just grabbed me and sat me right down on a pillow. Woo, hallelujah. And then I was laughing so hard. I was just laughing and somebody pointed behind me and I looked behind me and there was this big tall man. He was laid out on the floor right behind me. They, they said, they said that at the same time that I, that I was falling off the pulpit, they said he was coming up and he was grabbing, gonna grab a tissue off the podium but the lady said she said well you fell yes you did it wasn't graceful I said well I didn't feel a thing and she said but the the strange thing is you you never touched that man I never even touched him see I thought I fell on top of him and knocked him backwards she said no you never touched him but it was the power you know what I'm saying it was the power but it was almost like the Lord was like girl where you think you're going Whoop. it just laid me right down it was the funniest thing I couldn't stop laughing couldn't stop laughing the spirit of joy hit me and I started laughing so hard I started crying and I had people coming over to me I had women coming over to me oh my goodness are you okay <laughs> pastor come over to me she said are you okay I said I'm fine (laughs) it was the funniest thing I'm telling you it's the funniest thing but I have so much joy so much joy the joy of the Lord is my strength Woo! glory hallelujah my God so listen all of these things swimming along like a little fish right the blessing of the Lord the blessing of the Lord the glory of the Lord everything's going good and along comes the distraction now I'm not gonna go into great details about everything but I will just tell you this that when I came home oh my god when I came home I I got faced with some stuff I got faced with some stuff hallelujah and why am I saying here comes the distraction because this stuff that was coming at me it was nothing more than that it was a distraction it was a distraction from the enemy hallelujah now let me get to my word here Woo, glory hallelujah mm. all right hallelujah now Woo! Ha, my God Woo! My hallelujah Fishermen, fishermen sometimes use an artificial or a fake bait. When it's in the water and the sun hits it just right and it moves across the water just right, it appears to that fish to be real. And they go after that and it get, they get hooked. Uh-huh. Yeah. The devil waves things in front of you uh-huh, saying, look over here. Look at this. Come on over here. See what's going on over here. You better come on over here and you better handle this. You better come over here and you better take care of this. What is he doing? 
He's dangling that bait in front of you, trying to draw your attention away to get you distracted, to get you to take the bait. But somebody look at your neighbor and say, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. My God. Let's go back to verse 7. Woo! I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Woo, let's read verse 7 one more time. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house. And he hath committed all that he hath into my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So, what's happening? Potiphar's wife dangling that bait in front of Joseph, showing it to him, making it look real good to him, saying, I want you, Joseph. Come over here, Joseph. Be with me, Joseph. Uh-huh. Oh, Joseph, you know you want me. You can't resist me. Look at me, Joseph. Mm-hmm. Women have a real good, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A real good knack for doing that, don't we? Mm-hmm. But what do we see in verse 8? Hallelujah. In verse 8, what does it say? But he refused. Ooh, but he refused. We see that Joseph didn't take the bait. He refused her, right? Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He said, I can't do this. You're the one thing I can't touch. I can do all these other things. I can have all this other stuff. I can, but I got to stay away from you. Yeah. Woo yeah. My God. Verse 10, and it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to my eyes that <laughs> sorry to lie by her or her to be with her and it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within did i go too far i'm good so far i got one more verse and she caught him by his garment saying lie with me and he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out now let me go back to verse 10 oh we already read verse 10 let me, let me go back to verse 10 even though he refused her right we read that in verse 8 he refused her in verse 10 even though he refused her she just kept on dangling that bait right there in front of him the word said she spoke to him daily day by day right she she came to him what does what it say? Day by day. That's how the word said it. Day by day. So she kept coming to him every single day, daily. Joseph, come Joseph. Come jo Oh, Joseph, come lie with me. Come be with me, Joseph. Right? So she's continuously, day by day, trying to get him to come over there and lie with her, dangling that bait, hoping, she's hoping that he would bite. Amen? But he didn't listen to her. Right? We read that, on down there, we read that he left the house. Amen? He left the house. Whoo, hallelujah. He didn't take the bait. Amen? Oh, he didn't take the bait. Hallelujah. So, church, we've got to be aware. Come on. We've got to be aware of this shiny stuff that the devil is using to draw our attention away from our destiny. It looks real. It looks like God. It looks like it could be the Holy Ghost. It looks like it could be a word from the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. But it's fake bait. Amen. So we cannot get distracted by all the shiny stuff. Amen. Whoo. Hallelujah. My God. My God. You see, when I was talking to you about me and I'm just this little happy fish swimming along in the blessing of the Lord. Right. And the enemy brings this situation. Whoo, hallelujah, what's he doing? He's, he's dangling that bait, and he's trying to get me distracted. He's trying to get me to look over here. He's trying to get me to come after it. He's trying to get me to bite. He's trying to get my mind over here. He's trying to get me focused on this thing over here so that I can forget about what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, my God. Whoo, hallelujah. 
hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> but you know what? You know what I said when I was praying in the shower and this word came up in me? Don't take the bait. And I started, I started meditating on this. I said, ho, oh, oh, you done messed up, devil. You done messed up. <laughs> because I know what my God is doing. And I, oh, and I am not about to get out from under the blessing of the Lord. I, oh, I know where I'm supposed to be. So guess what, devil? I'm not taking the bait. I am not biting this time. I might have bited and bit in the last time. I might have done it in the previous season. And I might have got distracted before. But I ain't doing it this time. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. My Glory. Glory. You see? Woo. Think about Joseph. This, oh, this is fresh right here. This is fresh. It ain't even there. This is fresh right now. The thing about Joseph is Joseph, he understood. He understood where he got, how he got where he is. He understood how he got those things. He understood how he became a prosperous man. He understood that it wasn't nothing he did. He understood that it was all by the glory of God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Mama, Maya. And I'm telling you what tonight. I'm not me telling you, but I'm telling the devil. I'm telling you what, devil. I understand. Hallelujah. I understand my anointing. And I understand my power and my authority that's been given to me. And I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to go after that shiny bait that you're dangling in front of me. That's trying to get my mind where it's not supposed to be. Mm. I got too much to do. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I got too much to do. Hallelujah. I got a work to do for the Lord. I ain't got time to be distracted. Ooh, I told the church up there, I said, you know what? We ain't got time to play the devil's games. We ain't got time to be distracted. We ain't got time to dibble dabble on what the devil's doing. Amen. There's a real enemy out there. Oh my God. And he's working. We don't got to be afraid of him, but he's working and we are running out of time, church. It's time that we get serious. It's time that we get in our place. It's time that we get in our position and it's time, hallelujah, for the church to rise up. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. She da 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 yabasa. You see, the devil is persistent. Why aren't God's people? I'll say that again. The devil is very persistent. He don't stop. Did he stop with 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 Joseph? Does she stop after the first time he didn't come? No, nope, day by day, by day by day. What do you think the devil does? Day by day, by day by day, he's coming. And he's trying you. And he's working against you. And he's trying to take you out every single day. He's trying to, you know what? Grandma, Grandma Relaford, Mama Vaughn's mama, she used to say, people would say, well, the devil's doing this and the devil's doing that. She said, that's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. That's his job. So don't bring your little whiny weenie. The devil's making me do this. The devil just won't leave me alone. He's not supposed to leave you alone. You're just supposed to rise up and put it back in his place. Oh, hallelujah. Whew. So the devil ain't going to stop. Why should you stop? Hallelujah. And there's so many people giving out so many excuses. Oh, God. Why? Why they can't be what God's called them to be? Why they can't do what God has called them to do? 
why they can't walk in what God has called them to walk in. No, no, ain't no more excuses. My, 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 I know that ain't none of you. Mm. I know that ain't none of you because this church is on fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, don't take the bait. Don't take it. Don't take it. The devil will bring it. Don't take it. He'll bring it again. Don't take it. He'll bring it again. Don't take it. Don't take it. Don't take it. Hallelujah. Don't get distracted by it and don't take it. Now, I want to read one more scripture to you. Is that all right? Is this all right? Am I good? Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. This is going to be <laughs> Matthew 4. Matthew 4. Verse 1. Very familiar scripture here. Ha. Whoo, hallelujah. Another example for us to follow. Mm, and a good one at that. A real good one. You there? Yes. Amen. Then Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Who was being tempted? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Are you tempted? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are we any different than Jesus? Yes. Nope. Tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him and said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him up on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy, dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou shalt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And I'll just go ahead and finish that one. I don't know if I put 12 up there, but... Oh, no, I'm going to stop right there. Stop right there. Stop at 11. The devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So, what is happening here in this scripture? Right? Is the devil, is what's he doing? Jesus. Tempting Jesus. What's he? Shiny bait. Yeah. Trying to get him to bite, right? Yeah. Right? Try, trying to get him to question who he is. Yeah. That's the bait he's dangling. If you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, how many times has he said it? Three times. If you be the son of God, you know, so he's trying to, he's, he, he's trying to bait him, right? He's trying to get him to distract him. He's trying to get him to bite that hook, right? Yeah. So he took him up there on top of that, um, uh, the amplified, it said it as a gable sanctuary and said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. These angels, they'll come, they'll catch you, right? You know? But Jesus didn't take the bait. He didn't do it. None of those times did he do it. Amen. Right? So the devil, he tried that one last time by taking him up on the very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, said, I'll give you all these things if you will bow down and worship me. Ooh, does that not sound like what the enemy is still doing today? 
to a lot of folks, if you'll just come over here where the grass is greener, if you'll just stop going to that church and come over here where it's nice and calm and they get in an hour and out in an hour, they don't do all that foolishness, right? If you'll just come over here and do this, right? What's he doing? Same thing, the same thing. The same thing. He's trying to get us distracted. He's trying to pull us away, trying to lure us away, right, from, from, from what God is, is telling us we need to do. And so he's speaking to Jesus, and he's telling him, if you'll just bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this. And that is, I'm telling you, the devil ain't, whoo, he's stupid. He's so stupid. He's so stupid. And he ain't changed. He ain't changed at all. He's still telling people that same stuff. If you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this. If you come over here and serve me, you can have a better life. You can have a better marriage. Oh, you'll have so much peace in your marriage if you stop going to that church. Ooh, you, you'll have so much more money if you stop giving it all to that church. Uh-huh. Oh, you know, you'd, 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 you'd feel so much better in your body and you'd get over that sickness so much faster if you just stay home and rest. Mm. Hallelujah. All these things, bow down and worship me. Whoo, but Jesus didn't take the bait. And I like what he said, and I like what it says in the Amplified. Can I read it to you in verse? I'm going to read verse 10 to you out of the Amplified because I like it. Hallelujah. It says, then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan. You didn't catch it, did you? Be gone, Satan. Be gone. Somebody say, be gone. Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it has been written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. And then the devil departed from him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So listen, when did the devil go? When Jesus said what? Be gone. Be gone. So when you think the devil's going to leave you alone? When you tell him to be gone, Satan, leave me alone. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Be gone. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell, be gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, why does that work? Why does it work when you tell the devil to be gone? Faith, authority, power, dominion. dominion. <laughs> Everything we've been taught in this house, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Excuse me, I got a drink. Hallelujah. That's all I got on my paper. So, Jesus didn't take the bait. Joseph didn't take the bait. Hallelujah. You don't have to take the bait. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if anybody else has ever told you this, but I'm going to tell you this. You are strong enough to fight the devil. You are strong enough to stand up to him, and you are strong enough, hallelujah, that you do not have to give in to his temptation. You have what it takes. You got the word of God preached in this house for sure and you got the Holy Spirit in you you got what it takes to fight the devil you do not have to give in to him and you do not have to take the bait that he's dangling in front of you All right. hallelujah you're stronger than that hallelujah I don't know if anybody's told you but I just did All right. hallelujah glory hallelujah have you been helped tonight in this house Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. I believe, I believe that God's people have been tricked long enough. I believe that God's people have been distracted long enough. And I believe that we're in a time, hallelujah, when there's some people of God, there's some children of God, and they're all over the place. And I know there's some right here in this area. And they said, you know what? I'm tired. 
I'm tired of being distracted. I'm tired of letting the devil walk all over me. And I'm tired of being hooked on all the things that he's had in, uh, that he's offered me. I'm tired of being hooked. I'm, t- I'm tired of being hooked by the devil. I'm ready to come off of that. And I'm ready to get where God wanted me to be in the first place. Hallelujah. I, I'm tired of being under the curse. And I'm ready to get back under the blessing. Oh, my God. That is a message in itself. Hallelujah. And I can't get off of that. Woo! My Hallelujah. My the blessing, the blessing, the blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! Shikara da diabasi.